So I've worked with a lot of kids and a lot of families and a lot of schools. Um, you know, you'll pardon me if I stop. I have a box of tissues here. I had nasal surgery a few weeks ago. In fact, the last three presentations I've made on vaping during Red Ribbon Week and before that, I had my glasses taped up to my head because it couldn't touch my nose. So at least I've, I've healed a little bit. Um, we're here to talk about vaping, and, and it really has hit us quite a bit. I know uh, uh, the, the high school has just done the Illinois Youth Survey, and the changes over just the last few years, not just in this high school, but nationwide, um, you know, there's more than half of the kids that are trying vaping, most of them for the first time. It's becoming an in introductory use of primarily nicotine, but also THC. Um, in, which way do I point this? <laughs> there we are, okay. Um, in the old days, if your kid was smoking, you could smell it. You could go into their room, you say, what are you smoking? Is it, is it, is it, to, is it a cigarette, is it tobacco, is it pot? Um, now that's not the case. Vaping pens have, many of them have very little odor. When they first came out, um, eight or 10 years ago when they started to come out, they were a replacement for cigarettes and they, and they looked like cigarettes. Um, this, is, this is a vaping pen, um, a traditional one that looked like a cigarette. It has, uh, an, it has an end piece that lights up like a cigarette. It has a battery in it. It has uh, a unit that um, heats up a, a, an atomizer that heats up the nicotine oil, and it has a compartment for the nicotine oil that, uh, um, that um, stores that. No longer do they look like this, and you'll see a number of them. This is the way we want to go. There. No. You know, these are the ones that are to replace cigarettes. They're for individuals who are trying to quit smoking or at least they want to limit their exposure to some of the bad things that are in cigarettes. This is Mark 10. It's owned by Philip Morris, this, uh, the same companies that manages Marlboro. This is another one, Pure. The, these were the original vaping items that looked like cigarettes and were replacement for cigarettes or for cigars. Um, this is an East cigar. Um, this is what they've moved into. This this is where the oil can be put. And if you see a device like this, it can not only have nicotine, it can have THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, which is the active ingredient that gets people high in marijuana. Um, some of the THC oil can be over 90% pure. And the pot that was at Woodstock was anywhere between four and 12 or 15% pure. So this is very, very potent. Um, chemicals. Juul is the new one. How many of you heard Juul ads all of a sudden appear on the radio and the TV and you're saying, why are we getting inundated with Juul ads? Juul is the new, um, the, one of the newest vaping pens and they've taken over 60 to 70 percent of the market in the last two years. It was invented by two Two uh, men in San Francisco, they're backed by Fidelity Investments. They have a lot of money, over a billion dollars has been invested to develop this company. And it is the e-cigarette, it is the digital cigarette. Um, you know, it doesn't even look like a cigarette, it looks more like a USB drive. Uh, oops, I'm gonna get this order right. Um, if you see, it has, let me get to my notes because that way I can face the mic. Um, it has flavor pods, which are up at the top. Those little squares have different flavors. It could be mango, it could be creme brulee, it could be a, a number of different flavors that aren't geared toward adults. They're sweet, they're fruit flavors, they're other things that are more geared toward kids. The design is about the same size as a small pen, and it's rectangular, and you'll see those. We have a bedroom display called The Secret Life of a Teen Hidden in Plain Sight that's in one of the classrooms outside. So I encourage you to go to that after this, and you'll see a number of different vaping pens there. It's got a body that is, that's the battery, basically. And this is the charger that plugs into a computer or a tablet or a charger. It's a USB charger. 
And if you saw it in your, in your son or daughter's backpack, you'd figure it's a computer piece. It's not a vape pen. Well, this is, this is the newest one. Um, it has spread like wildfire through the schools. It's an epidemic proportion. More than half of the kids on a number of the surveys have tried it. Uh, it costs about 15 or $20 for a Juul with the battery and about 15 to $20 for the four refills that come that, there we are, that come in a container. It's so easy to hide in your hand that they're having trouble catching kids because they can, they can um, inhale and blow down their shirt and, and you can't even see what they're doing. And this, the, the scent is very, very faint. If you're very close to them, you might smell something sweet as if they had had, had a candy or, or a cough drop or something. Um, it's not like the original vape pens that left a big puff of white vapor that you could see the smoke. It leaves very little vapor. So it really is a stealth vape. Um, one pod equals one pack of cigarettes, about 200 puffs. Um, and the starter kit has four pods, about 800 puffs. What are the risks? And are they being marketed to kids? Or is this really just uh, uh, for current smokers to stop smoking or do something that's less, less damaging? Well, let's see how they're selling it. Oops. I'll get this right sometime. This is Crave. It has over 300 fruit flavors. Now, how many 40-year-old smokers would this appeal to? I mean, it really is something that's very attractive to kids to use. And I've talked with kids who I've seen vaping outside, either by the YMCA or some of the other places, and they say it's just water vapor. It's just flavor. There's no nicotine in it. Well, they've tested a number of them, even if they don't say nicotine. The majority of those tested had nicotine in them. They're, they're being made at the same factory, at the same place where nicotine, where the one the juice is what it's called. The, the oil in it is called juice oftentimes. Um, and where that juice has nicotine in, and, and they're not very careful about keeping it separate. Uh, it's not regulated yet by the FDA. But the reason you're hearing all those ads is because a few weeks ago, maybe a little more than a month ago, the FDA went in and raided Juul and took a bunch of their documents and their emails and computer files and other things to see, you know, after all of this growth and this epidemic uh, happened, to see if they're marketing toward kids, to see why it's these fl fruit flavors, to, to, to get their internal documents like they did with the tobacco company, with the tobacco companies before they started the lawsuits for that. The FDA has threatened with shutting down the vaping industry, or at least Juul and some of those for marketing to kids. And that's why you're seeing this intensive marketing now that's saying it's not for kids, it contains nicotine, it's for people who smoke. Uh, the, the Juul commercials now say, you know, if you don't smoke, don't start. You know, if you don't, if you don't use nicotine, don't start vaping. Uh, and it's not for kids. Well, this is after the fact. This is, in essence, after they've been caught. Yes, abs thanks for saying that. Yes, also we received about a dozen questions beforehand and we'll answer those as well because some of you sent in questions when you sent in your invitation. Vanilla cupcake. Now, who would this appeal to? It even says zero calories. 50 servings. You know, it's supposed to look like something that, that a kid would want. And they're using some of the same marketing strategies that, that, that tobacco has. Santa Claus says, I don't always vape, but when I do, I choose Vapor Shark. Uh, and there are other um, things that I've seen online that have uh, um, the same 
format as cigarette ads 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Instead of Mr. Camel, it's Mr. Cool. Um, in, in, instead of a, a, a girl holding a cigarette in front of a plane in a 1950s Marlboro ad, you have uh, the same pose, the same type of model only in today's clothes with today's plane behind her. And so you see it's the same marketing firm. And the tobacco is coming from the same, the, the nicotine is coming from tobacco from the same companies. So this is big tobacco digital. They're trying to move people from being smokers to being vapors. And, and, and as you can see, and if you can't say it says smoker, if you still use tobacco, add new tobacco are new to e-cigarettes have tried them before, click here. And if you're a vapor, click here. And, and they're really trying to move people to this new, this new item. And people think that it's safe. Well, it may be less lethal than cigarettes, but let's see if it's safe. The vaping chemicals used in liquids can be more concentrated and dangerous than those in tobacco. Inhaling from a vape pen or e-cigarette, especially in the case of one containing nicotine or THC, can enhance a drug user's high and can amplify the drug's side effects much more than, than, than a traditional cigarette. It's also very new and there are little, literally hundreds of brands and very little information about what chemicals are in them. If you look at some of the boxes we've got on display, there's very little description other than flavorings. Um, Beyond nicotine and THC, the synthetic chemicals that make up these liquids, including herbal incense like spice and synthetic marijuana, expose the lungs to a variety of chemicals which could include carcinogens and toxic metal nanoparticles from the heating elements. Not only could these chemicals make their way into young lungs, causing irritation and potentially smoker's cough, but they could da do damage to the inside of the mouth and throat. Yeah. We know they're harmful even without tobacco. Do we know that vaping particularly causes cancer? That's going to take 15 to 20 years, and, and I'm not willing to be the experiment or, or have kids be the experiment to see what's going to happen in 15 or 20 years to determine if a person's risk of cancer increases. We know they contain nicotine. We know they contain THC. Nicotine is as addictive as heroin. The bottles of the nicotine concentrate are poisonous to young kids, extremely poisonous to young kids, to pets. Um, some people who've gotten the, the, the oil on their skin and aren't smokers have felt the nicotine um, um, impact their heart rate and, and, and their pulse and give them a regular heartbeat. Kids will say that it's safer. Well, this is safer than smoking cigarettes. The term really that you should be using is it's less lethal. Here are the chemicals that are listed that have been found by the CD, CDC, the 42 chemicals that have been identified in electronic cigarettes. Those with check marks can be harmful to your health in other types of experiments. Those with asterisks are known carcinogens from other types of lab experiments with that type of chemical. So you've got acetaldehyde, acetone, acrolein, benzene, cadmium, chromium, diethylglycol, formaldehyde, lead, nickel, nicotine, nitrosononicotine, methylbenzaldehyde, phenol, propanol, propylene glycol, which is what's in uh, antifreeze, tin, toluene, those are the ones that are known toxic chemicals of which some of them are carcinogen. And that's what's been found in e-cigarettes. Now, if you looked at regular cigarettes, there are a number of more of them. So it is safer if you currently smoke cigarettes to go to vaping, not safer, but less toxic. But does that mean it's safer to jump off of a three-story building than it is to jump off of a six-story building? 
I'd like to introduce Matt Quinn right now, who will present some things to you in more in depth on what we've been talking about. And then I'll come up back and talk about what kids are saying about vaping pens and what you can do as a parent. I'm going to take this off if it's okay so I can move around. I, I don't like to be restricted by that podium too much. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. I know you have busy lives, especially this time of the year. School's in full swing, mid-semester, right? Um, so I'm Matt Quinn. I work with uh, Rosecrans Health Network. We're a local provider here in LaGrange. We provide outpatient treatment for teens and adults. And then we have residential treatment out in Rockford as well. I just want to pick up where, where Ron left off talking about this topic. So why are we talking so much about this? There's a lot of you here. We, we had an event a year ago, and Ron can attest to this. There's a lot more of you here now than there were at the, at the event, event last year. And I, th I think that speaks to what we're dealing with here. I think a lot of you are here is because you maybe are getting questions from your kids, or your kids are trying this, and you don't know what to tell them, or you don't know what to say. You've maybe done your, some research, and you're not sure what to do. So hopefully through this, through this presentation, you'll pick up on some, some information. So what I did, some of you may be familiar with the Illinois Youth Survey, of which Lyons Township uh, is participating and participated this past spring. What I did is I just pulled one slide of data. There's, how many pages are there, Scott? There's 100, 100 pages in, this, uh, in the report. Um, so I tried to make it simple for you in terms of pulling out what I think is the most relative, relevant information in terms of this presentation. This is information from uh, suburban Cook County and then DuPage County, which is the, the, the bulk of the area where I work uh, for Rosecrans. And if you look at the 2016, so this isn't just LaGrange, this is like kind of the area overall. Um, if you look at the number of kids that were using some type of vaping or e-cigarette product, this is 10th and 12th graders, by the way, um, in 2016 versus 2018, that's a huge jump. We're talking about a jump from one in nine, one in 10, all the way up to, what is that, between one in four and one in three? That's a really big jump in a two year period. We don't, in my field, we don't usually see jumps that big in a two year period. To give you some context with alcohol in a lot of communities, it's either flat, down a percent, down a two couple percent, marijuana's uh, been pretty flat the past couple years, although I'm worried that with legislation and where Illinois is headed and other states legalizing it, Nationally, we're starting to see an uptick again in marijuana use, and I'm afraid that might happen in Illinois if, if it is recreationally legalized. Um, but this is, this is huge when you consider other drugs that are kind of in the same category, quote unquote. You're seeing not a lot of movement, and you're seeing a, this big of a jump where it's jumping right up into the same ballpark as marijuana and just below alcohol in terms of the drugs that, that kids are using or are experimenting with. So this is why we're talking about this. This is why you're all here. It's, it is nice, though, now to have the data to back up what we kind of anecdotally know already, because we've been talking about this for a year or two. But now it's nice because now it drives presentations like this and interventions and, and other things in the school to try to get these numbers down. So as much as I hate seeing this jump, part of me is that, okay, now we have the numbers to back it up and do something about it. So I do want to talk about just the term vaping itself. I like to talk about this because I think it's important. Because I think the term vaping is very, very misleading. Ron talked to you about some of all the different chemicals, and I'll, I'll touch on it as well, that are in these uh, vaping devices or e-cigarettes. But the word vaping itself is basically the verb, fo verb form of the word vapor, right? Now, I don't know about you, but when I, when I hear the word vapor, I think of, and this is a bigger group, usually if it's a smaller group, I'll get people to raise their hand. I think of a humidifier. I think of steam coming off of a boiling pot of water. If somebody's making pasta or whatever they would need to boil water for. In our house, it's three little kids. It's mac and cheese every other meal, right? <laughs> Sounds like it's true in other people's houses, too. You do, but in all reality, that's not what these devices are, what, what kids are inhaling when they use these devices. It's more of an aerosol in terms of the actual, what it actually is. It's, but it's much more similar to what would come out of a, a can of hairspray in terms of the consistency of it and the number of chemicals that are in it. But do you think as many kids would be doing it if it was called aerosoling, <laughs> which is actually more accurate 
versus if it's called vaping. Because vaping, kids picture that humidifier that mom, maybe dad, if it was a you know, real active, uh, responsible dad, put in their room. You know, if they had a cold or, you know, to break up the, right? I'm getting over a cold. Maybe I could use a humidifier in my room, right? And so that's what kids are thinking. If you put yourself in the mind of a young person and you hear vapor and then you hear mint and all these other flavors, I could understand why kids would think that it's relatively harmless, harmless just based on that term. It used to be e-cigarettes for years and years. I wish it still was because to me an e-cigarette sounds closer to what actually is being inhaled than vapor. Vapor, what happens if you stick your head over a humidifier for half hour, hour, nothing. And in fact, it might make you breathe better, right? And that's a huge part of this problem is the fact that kids are falling for that and thinking that's what they're, what they're inhaling is something that's just flavored humidifier air. You know, I hear all the time, oh, smoking, if you're from kids, let's say, oh, smoking's gross, I wouldn't touch that. Because they equate that with like putting their head over a campfire and inhaling all of that smoke. And with these vaping devices, they think of that humidifier. And that's, in my mind, probably the biggest area of education and correction that we need to make with kids and with parents like yourself is to correct that misconception of what this really is that kids are inhaling. Ron started to talk about the chemicals that are in there. One that he didn't mention is diacetyl, which is a, in a, a 75% of these devices, it's a flavoring agent associated with these devices. And there's a term called popcorn lung. The, the medical term is bronchiolitis obliterans. What does obliterans sound like? What word, well, if you didn't pick, what, word, what one word does that sound like? Obliterate, does that sound good? No. So you're talking about, and, and the, by, the, by the way, the term popcorn lung, is, this was discovered by a doctor working near a, a microwave popcorn factory in Missouri. And a lot of, the, several of the workers were coming to him with this condition, really significant lung damage, some, some of which needed lung transplants. And they were inhaling the vapor. This is a common flavoring agent in microwave popcorn. Now, before you freak out, because aside from the mac and cheese, the microwave popcorn is another snack of choice in the Quinn household. But it's safe, the FDA has determined that it's safe for consumption. But inhaling something is different than consuming it. So we, if you're inhaling this ingredient, so just connect the dots. Popcorn lung, lung damage, workers in the microwave popcorn factory inhaling diacetyl, diacetyl in 75%. But all the companies that make these devices will say that they're in minute quantities and small quantities. But when you have a kid, and, and this is not unusual for us to hear when we're assessing kids in our LaGrange office or another office, 40, 50, 60 times they're hitting these things a day. So you might say, yeah, it's a minute quantity, but it adds up. It adds up, it adds up, it's cumulative, right? So that's an important part is connecting those dots between these different uh, ingredients. I wanted to also build off of what Ron was saying in turn gives, gives some of these uh, chemicals context in terms of some of the chemicals that are in, uh, in these vaping devices. And Ron mentioned some of these. Uh, benzene, found in pesticides and gasoline. Uh, isoprene, major component made a uh, natural rubber and used to make synth synthetic rubbers, synthetic rubber. Um, formaldehyde, most of us know what formaldehyde is, right? It's used to preserve, if anybody uh, dissected animals in biology class, it's the fluid that was used to preserve the dead bodies, right? Toluene, a uh, poisonous industrial solvent. Uh, acetaldehyde, poisonous solvent and in paint stripper. Paint stripper, right? Small quantities though, remember that? Cadmium, toxic heavy metal. Um, Lead, nickel, tin, there's metals in here. I think Ron mentioned this, but there's ingredients in some of these that aren't even in cigarettes. Why? Because there's a heat metal heating element that heats up the liquid, and some of the metal on that heating element then leaches out or diffuses into the vapor itself. So you have some ingredients, some carcinogens that aren't, aren't even in cigarettes. A lot of them are. Benzene, some of these, there's, there's a handful that are in both. So when kids say, oh, I wouldn't smoke cigarettes, but I'll do one of these, they just don't, I think they don't know. They don't understand that there's still a whole bunch of chemicals still in here 
they're thinking of that humidifier. So our job is to get them thinking of aerosol, the ha hairspray, aerosoling, chemicals. We need to drill that in. We need to get that in kids' heads so that they at least understand. Um, and, and I love the idea, Chris, I'm giving you credit for this. The idea, you know, because we talked about the jewel being, uh, the cartridge being a, a pack of cigarettes. I have my handy bag of vapes. This is, my wife made this pouch for me. Isn't this beautiful? Rosecrans pouch. Well, she saw that I had these, all these bags of vapes that I was carrying around for presentations like this, and she said I looked like a drug dealer. So she made me a, she made me these, uh, she made me a pouch for it. So the, the jewel cartridge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the microphone in just so I can use two hands here. So, what is? If you guys haven't seen this, who hasn't? Has anybody not seen a jewel at this point? Okay, make sure before you leave. Come up here, or I think there's some in the bedroom. Yeah, whole... Take a look at one of these, because Ron talked about marketing and the explicit marketing on the Juul box. Uh, alternative to adult smoke, smokers, right? That's how e-cigarettes started. But you have to really be wise and look at the implied market. What does this look like? Can you see it? You guys up front can see this, right? What is this? Just shout out what this looks like. Yeah, it looks kind of like a long flash drive, right? And then you have the flavors and you have the fact that you can blow it down your shirt in a class or in a bathroom and nobody would know the difference, right? So the cartridge, which looks like a little fuse, you can't even see it, it's so small. I know some of you up front could probably see this, but it holds a very small amount of liquid. It's not much, but like Ron mentioned, it's a, this, a, this is equivalent of a pack of cigarettes, right? So I love the creative idea of getting kids to equate this with a pack of cigarettes because the amount of nicotine and other chemicals they're equal. So whether that, that means putting up poster boards with equal signs and empty packs of cigarettes, with, but that's, you have to connect with kids in a way that they're not, because it's, it's not going in. They're, think, they're thinking cupcake, okay, or, or Cocoa Krispies. I like Cocoa Krispies, you know? And then they're thinking of the humidifier. We just need to, we need to educate them and get them to understand that there's way more to the story than, we're, than, than, than is out there. Brain development is a huge part of this because when you have 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds using these that have these uh, concentrate that has concentrated nicotine in them. This is true of marijuana. This is true of alcohol, kind of those more entry, what we call entry or experimental type drugs, even more damaging or particularly damaging to the teenage brain because more and more research is showing that the brain's not fully developed until about 25 for males, even closer to 30. And, doesn't that make sense now, all you females in the crowd, right? I, I, when I first heard that, I laughed because it's like, well, I guess that makes sense. Um, so when you have a teenager who has 10 more years of rapid brain development still doing one of these, you're talking about a whole different, not that it's necessarily safe or okay or smart for a 30 or 40 year old to be doing this, but it's apples and oranges. You're talking about a much more significant impact on prefrontal cortex development. With marijuana, you're talking about amygdala, nucleus. I mean, it's, when you talk about all these drugs combined, it's, it's really hitting on every part of the brain in terms of that brain development. Um, and I've already, because I've been doing this for 15 years, I'm so warped and cynical. I already have my, ten, my, my, daughter, my oldest daughter just turned 10. And we talk about this, she's like, Dad, I know I, my brain development, I can't do any of these things, and my brain's developing, so I'm 20. So I'm already trying to brainwash her in a good way to try to get her to realize, part of it is just me setting the groundwork so if she starts messing around with that stuff, I can be like, okay, well, you know why I'm taking away the phone, grounding, whatever, right? But it's, uh, to me, it's a cornerstone of this, is, is, is that piece in terms of the, uh, the brain development piece. The other piece before I get into, and I won't talk too much about Jewel because I feel like we've covered it pretty adequately, but the other piece to this too is just the risk for progressing to other drugs and developing a more significant problem. There's many, many, many studies out there that show uh, whether it's 12, 13, 14, every year younger that, that uh, middle school or high school age student tries anything, nicotine, marijuana, alcohol, their chance of developing a later significant substance use disorder is higher. It, it's, it's just like, it just steps down or steps up, depending on how you look at it, in terms of that age of first use. So when you're talking about these devices, that, that relates. If it's a nicotine vape and they're 12, 13, 14, they are, they are tapping into that part of the brain that is not fully developed, that reward system, that is really susceptible to really clinging on to a drug 
and developing a dependence on it and developing a, a later problem. So I think that's really important to acknowledge as well when it comes to these devices is that risk for developing a further substance use issue. I think, Rob, I think we covered everything in terms of Juul pretty much. Obviously, if you guys have specific questions once we get to the Q&A, you're, you're welcome to do that. This is what I used to do. These are some older slides. I would have, I'd have pictures of the Juul and I'd say it's about this long. And I was like, why am I doing that when I'm going to all these schools that have boxes of these things? And this is a, this is a problem, either a small problem, medium or large problem at every school. This is happening everywhere. So there's boxes of these things. So I'd ask them if, they, if I could just use them for presentations because it made more sense to be able to hold them up and do this uh, versus, be, versus just having to say it's this long or this big. But I did want to hit on a couple other ones that we're seeing a lot so you know what to look out for. Uh, one that we've seen really emerge over the past year, it's Soren, and they have different models. The one that was out a couple years ago looks like a kind of like a credit card if you can't see. Again, feel free to come up and, and look at these as, if you want at some point. Um, the one that's been out for the past year, although, Scott, I think you said you saw a newer one, right? That's kind of like a little square. Um, so keep an eye out for that. This one looks like it's a, it's a teardrop shape. That's the one that's on the slides here. Uh, it almost, to me, looks like a highlighter. This one's really grown in popularity because it comes empty, and so it's refillable. So kids will buy their own e-liquid or e-juice, and I have some of that as well if you want to come take a look at that. Um, and just to give you a sense of the flavors, we have... Uh, peaches and cream, and Cap'n Cap and Crunch Berries. Implied marketing. Does that sound like it's marketing to a 43-year-old like me? I doubt it. No. It's, it's, it's targeting kids. Cap'n Crunch Berries. I mean, they, I mean, is anybody, hopefully nobody here that works for Pax Labs or Juul, but I mean, they could put an alter, adult alternative to smoking. I mean, that's fine. Put it on the box, but I don't think they're fooling any of us in terms of who, who they're actually marketing to. So because this is a refillable device, if you, have, if you have somebody that's using it a lot, they can continue to refill it with different flavors or, or save money in the long run because the, 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 the vials of these things over the long run are going to save them money versus having to buy the, the jewel cartridges over and over and over and having to, uh, to pay that cost. So it's similar cost. This device is about 30 35 dollars uh, but it's empty so it, it, it has to be refilled on a on a regular basis once it's once it's used up another one that we see is called fix ph with a ph um, this one looks a lot like the jewel um, and it's too hard to see you guys should just come up and see or go in the in the bedroom and take a look at the the ones that are in there what's interesting though is that this one that i have that they have what's called wraps for a lot of these this is the plain jewel but uh, what they're catching with a lot of kids is they put, this one has kind of like a psychedelic, where they buy these little like stickers that wrap around it to give it their own, so they're kind of, you know, teenagers, right? They gotta be unique from everybody else. So they have these skins that they put around them so that, you know, they're, they ha they're tailing, tailoring their vape. But that shows you how far this has come where kids are tailoring their vape to them by wrapping it with this, you know, with a sticker so that they, they'll know whose is theirs and they could show off to their friends their, the cool pattern that's on there on their vape. This one I've heard kids describe as a jewel on steroids. It's much stronger, much more nicotine. So it's kind of a competing product that's competing by having a much stronger uh, dose of nicotine. So a similar shape, it's more kind of diamond shape versus that rectangular shape that you see with the jewel. Another thing I want you to be aware of, although you don't see this as much with use, this you should be able to see from a distance. Is anybody dr driving on the street and all of a sudden it looks like a car's on fire? Yeah, so mo most, for most, the most part, it's gonna probably be one of these. This is called a mod. And what this white thing is, is for the most part, it's this big souped up battery. This is almost all battery. But what it does is it allows for a bigger puff of vapor, bigger cloud. And that's what you see when you drive by that car that looks like it's on fire. For the most part with young people, we're not seeing this as much for obviously, uh, obvious reasons, right? Because they wanna be discreet. And it's very difficult to be discreet with one of these because it produces a bigger, bigger cloud uh, and much, much bigger vapor. But I wanted to point that out just, to, just for your own education around this topic. We do have to talk about marijuana because we're hearing more and more about devices that are getting into schools, whether it's from states like Colorado or uh, through some of the medicinal marijuana shops that are in the state that are, some of the devices getting into the black market. And if you think that's not happening, trust me, it is. I hear, I hear many, many stories about it. 
Um, dabs is just a, a, a slang term for really high potency marijuana, and, and it tends to have kind of this yellow color to it. So there's a lot of dab pens, they call them, or devices that have different uh, marijuana liquids in them. A lot of them are just self-contained. More and more, we're seeing these self-contained devices that have a certain amount of liquid in them that activate by inhaling, and then there's, say, 100, 200 puffs to it. it the liquid runs out, and you toss it. It's just a, like a disposable cigarette, more or less. That's what we're seeing more and more of. Other devices, you can take a piece of this wax, this high concentrate marijuana, and put it in the device, and there's an element that heats it up. But for more and more, we're seeing these kind of self-contained devices that have the liquid already preloaded into it. One of the biggest problems with this, these dabs or butane hash oil, it's a, it's a lab-made, this is a lab-made product where the potency is through the roof where traditional marijuana is in the realm of, you know, 5 to 20 percent THC, more like probably 10 to 25 now. This is every year that goes by, this is increasing more and more. But these dabs, this is, you're talking about anywhere from 70 to 100 percent THC. You're talking, so you're talking 5, 6, 7, I'm not good at math, I hope I hit it with saying 5, 6, 7 times as, as, as much marijuana in that. So, in this era where marijuana, medicine, legalization, the whole country of Canada, right? Not a big deal, right? And then you have this high potency marijuana, kids using this. I just assessed a, t a kid today that was, was using one of these. You could see where, where we're headed with this perception of marijuana, but the, the realities of what's going on with marijuana in terms of its potency. And the potency is only gonna go up and up and up. Obviously it can't go above 100. But what I mean is you're gonna see a higher and higher amount or percentage of the devices or the marijuana being in that 70 to 100 percent. So it's not it's not the same thing. So what I'm trying to tell you is, please don't buy into this public perception, especially with youth, that marijuana is harmless or that it's medicine for kids. Now there 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 will be and there are medicinal uh, purposes for parts of the marijuana plant, the cannabidiol, the CBD, the non-psychoactive part. There's a FDA approved medication for seizure disorders with kids. So there's a lot of nuance to this, but we talk about THC, talk about smoking. When was the last time a doctor told you to smoke your medicine? Is there, so there's a lot, it's just kind of the wild west right now in terms of, okay, here's, here's, here's some marijuana, smoke it. It's, it's medicine for, you know, for, for, you know, throw a dart at the disorder. Yeah, that'll, that'll be good. You know, like I was talking to one, one girl whose, whose sister, was, was smoking marijuana because she had, had seizures and it was making the seizures worse. She was getting seizures more often because she was smoking marijuana and had this misperception that it would help. So it's, again, this term medical marijuana is being kind of a, a blanket that's thrown over, over the whole industry when it really needs to be much more nuanced than that, in, in my opinion. So just some sources, I'd be happy to share these sources with you. Any of these slides, any of this information, just let me know, I'd be happy to share it with you. Uh, in a second, I'm gonna turn it back to Ron. I just did wanna mention briefly um, that we do offer free, uh, free assessments for teens right here in LaGrange uh, at our Naperville office. Some of you might recognize this building. It's right just a block east of uh, downtown LaGrange, right near just a block east of the Starbucks there um, in downtown LaGrange, where we offer free assessments if you're concerned about your teen's use or you know, they're starting to use or they're progressing with their use, please let us know, let me know. Uh, we'd be happy to do an assessment because we have outpatient services in LaGrange. And then God forbid, but if we do have residential level uh, treatment as well out in Rockford, uh, we have an 80 bed center out there where unfortunately this time of year, we're really, really busy just because it just tends to be a, a difficult time of year for a lot of kids. Uh, so I did just want to briefly mention that. Uh, and then I want to turn it back over to Ron because Ron's going to talk about Kind of what students, oop, I jumped the gun. Uh, what students are talking about, and then some take home tips for you as parents in terms of how you can approach this topic, with things you could talk about, things you could do to try to, to deal with this uh, kind of ever growing issue. So thank you. Clean up your drugs. Yeah, right. <laughs> thank you, Matt. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sure. Um, <laughs> One of the things I wanted to mention before we get into this regarding teen brain development is um, an, a, a process that happens as teens develop called pruning. And you've seen it all in your own kids. If, if a kid, or, or an adult for that matter, but kids develop so fast and get skills so readily, um, 
that if they choose one thing, their body is, and their mind is going to develop in that area because they will get rewarded by that area. So if, they're, if they really like soccer, if they really like music, if they really like football, if they really like math and they're head of the math club, that part of their brain, that, that skill with their body, whatever that is, it will develop and they will get better and better and they'll get more rewarded the better they are. And so they'll pursue that area. Well, the brain and the body is going to cut off the areas they don't use. So if they go into drama, they go into music, well, you know, their, their skills at soccer won't be that good. And they may, if they pick up soccer at age 20 or 25, they may not be as good as they were if they picked up soccer at 10. Or baseball or, or music or whatever, you know. The, the younger you are when you pick up something, the better you develop that. And, and the reason that a, a, a person, a person's brain would want to develop something is that they get rewarded. You know, they, they, they win the baseball game. They, they do well on the recital. You know, the, the audience claps when they're up here on stage. Uh, and and we, when we got here, there was a play that was, was going on, and I think it was dress rehearsal, and they had L, uh, LTTV and everything. And, and, and so kids developing things are able to develop in certain areas, but they lose the areas they don't develop. Well, if they're using these products... They're getting rewarded from the nicotine. They're getting rewarded from the THC. They will develop skills to get rewarded in those areas more and more. To the point, particularly with THC and with drugs, that will become the high point of the day. That will be their goal, is to get high and maintain everything else and just kind of go through the motions until they can pursue where they get their biggest reward. You know, my son went to high school for sports. He was, a, uh, he was one of the few guys who went out for a sport every season. And he could care less about most of his classes. That, that's not where he developed, but he developed as an athlete. Well, if you're developing as a THC smoker or as a vapor, which is a whole different culture, and, and if you look online and YouTube, there are contests, there are clothes, there are terms, there are slangs, there, it, it is a subculture. The vaping is a subculture as people move into, um, say, older youth and young adults. They, it's almost like skaters and other types of subcultures. So um, they, they expand where they're getting rewarded and they lose the abilities in the other areas. So what they could have been will be gone. And that's one of the big points in brain development that, that I'm concerned about. And the younger they start using these products, the less they are able to expand in other areas. What are kids saying about this? That kids that you would never, the, the first parents don't know what it is. You know, it looks like a USB drive. They're not going to know what we're doing. They're not going to find out. Um, kids that you would never expect to do it are doing it. Kids who would never drink at a party, kids who would never smoke cigarettes, kids who would never smoke pot. You know, they, they, as Matt was saying very well, they think it's a vapor, they think it's harmless, they think, that, and it's a new trend and lots of kids are doing it. Um, they just don't think that it's bad. And I'm going to move through these rapidly so we can get to your questions. Students are jeweling at school, in the hallways, in the bathrooms, even in classroom. One student during an exam um, spoke, smoked, smoked into his sweatshirt, as Matt was showing. You just, you, these are very small items. You can hide them in your hand. You can suck on them when the teacher is looking the other way and blow it down your shirt. Um, unless you know what you're looking for, you won't be able to smell it. It's very, very subtle, the smell. Now, THC has more of a musty odor and it has more of an odor. You can smell that more than the nicotine and the other flavors that they have. Um, but, but it's very hard for you to tell what's going on. Students claim that they're waking up in the middle of the night to, to, to vape, that they can't wait. And they don't have to go outside for a cigarette the way the smokers do. They, they, they aren't banned from the area. It's very stealth. Even kids who would not be caught dead drinking at a party or vaping. 
You know, they can charge it off their tablets, off of computers, off of computer charges. So they can charge it at school if it's dead. Yeah. This is what the students are saying who don't vape. Their fear of getting addicted, that of it affecting their future, of getting in trouble with parents or the law. It is illegal. It's the same as tobacco. Uh, and, and Chris and Scott can tell you what the consequences are if they get caught in school with either, either nicotine products or THC or other drug products. But, but, but there will be consequences if they get caught. Now, what can you do as a parent? One of the things that the Illinois Youth Survey Bureau says over the years are that parents who communicate their stance, what they expect of their kids, those kids are less likely to smoke, to vape, to use alcohol, to use drugs, because they know what's very expected, what, what's very clearly expected of them by their parents. Um, parents who don't approach the subject, who don't discuss it with their kids, those kids are at higher risk. Yelling does not help. Believe me, I know, having my own kids as they were growing up. Yelling does not help. Um, Talk to them. You've come to this. We're going to give you a ton of handouts and other items, so please take them with. You've got a reason to, to approach the subject. A good time to approach the subject is in the car. You have them trapped for a while, and they know that it will end soon. <laughs> so it's, it's a good time to have a discussion about things, and they don't have to look at you in the eye. Um, talk about what you've, that you've heard. You're curious. You're curious. Ask them what they've seen or what they heard or what they think about it. Don't use yes or no questions because you'll just get one word answers. You know, have you done this? No. And that will kind of end the discussion. So how do you feel about that? They have to talk more. You know, what do you think about that? What have you seen? What do you think your friends do? How many, how many kids or how wide is this at school? So ask questions that will require more words to answer. Um, tell them that it's the same thing. That, it, that, that as Matt was, was saying, as his example was so clear, that it's not a vapor. And it's the same thing as smoking. It's e-cigarettes. It's e-smoking. And you expect them not to do it. Don't use scare tactics. You, know, you will die. That, that didn't work with cigarettes. <laughs> when, when, when I was in high school, there were bathrooms you couldn't go in because it was full of cigarette smoke. Um, you know, it, 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 there's bathrooms that you go in now in high schools, and it's full of kids who are vaping. So. Threatening them doesn't work. Use facts. That's why we're giving you so many facts. That's why we want you to know. Because then they will come to you because you have the facts rather than just the rumors that are going, going around with their friends or the contests that are on YouTube about how big of a smoke ring you can blow with your vaping or, or various other contests that they have with vaping. And don't be afraid to talk about addiction. Your nicotine is one of the most addictive substances. Um, it affects the development, the, the reward center that I talked about, so that that's what people want to do. Um, and, and we'll do that instead of pursuing other rewards that you would want them to do, such as sports or arts or, or, or studies. Um, remind them that the brain is still developing, like Matt was saying, till age 25 or 30. Um, encourage natural hives, things that they really want to do. What do you think that would be exciting? What would a kid want to do? Where do you want to be in five years, in 10 years? And, and alcohol and drugs and, and vaping won't get them there. You know, what, what type of life, if everything was perfect, what would their life be like? What type of job, what type of family, where would they be in the future? And usually they don't say, well, I want to be addicted to a vaping pen. 
You know, I want to be a pothead sitting on a couch or, or using THC and not doing anything other than watching TV. And set a positive example as far as what your behavior is. Let them know that you've come here. Let them know that you have information. Look it up online. Find out what's happening. Just kids knowing that you are researching it and you are trying to stay up on it. You know, that, that you're looking at their bedroom. We have a bedroom display that I encourage you all to come. That's called The Secret Life of a Teen Hidden in Plain Sight. You search their bedroom a few times and they stop, they stop hiding anything that might even cause any problems. You know, because, because they know that you might be looking at some time. They know that you're researching things. And again, they'll come to you for information rather than um, rely on other things. And encourage them to look at trusted sources. Okay. Track their online activity. If you give a kid a gift card that's good anywhere, you don't know what they might buy online. I mean, my kids, my nieces and nephews, I give them gift cards to Starbucks, to movies, to other things that I know that's what they will use it for. I mean, sure, they might be able to sell it to somebody else and get some money, but at least it makes it harder for them to order things. You can order a lot of these things online, a lot of the things we have in the bedroom online, and um, the marijuana items come from Colorado, Washington State, Oregon, those other states where it's completely legal, and it's sent by FedEx or UPS or some other private carrier that really can't be searched by the government unless a judge swears out a search warrant on a particular package with a particular address on it, so they already have to know that it's coming. So it's very difficult for them to control. Now let's get to the questions. I know we've got some cards. I hope we have some cards. Uh, I know we have some cards out there. I hope we have some cards with some questions on them. But I've gotten some questions beforehand that some of you filled out when you registered for this course um, or, or, or this workshop tonight, this university. Um, one of the questions was, with vaping is how they get marijuana in it and does it lead to, to marijuana usage? Well, they get marijuana in it from those, lo those locations where it's legal uh, and it's put in. They can also do it themselves with butane, but it's kind of like having a meth lab. And you hear about uh, um, explosions every once in a while, particularly in Colorado and, and other areas where marijuana is legal, where they can get the marijuana and then they're distilling it down to a, an oil that might be very, very intense. Um, Matt, why don't you come up sure. here? There's a couple of mics. So uh, as I go through these, we can just comment on them. Um, Someone asked, I'd like to know the percentages of kids vaping marijuana and the dangers to teens. Now, you mentioned that in your uh, presentation regarding the western suburbs. Yeah, so um, nicotine vaping has uh, quickly caught up. You saw some of those numbers, 20, 25, 30 percent. It's caught up to the point now where nicotine vaping uh, and marijuana use are pretty much neck and neck. Um, and I don't, and I know Ron doesn't want to mislead. I don't want to mislead. Uh, alcohol still is the number one in terms of that drug of entry. Typically, it's in the 30-some percentile relative to those other statistics. But like I said, nicotine vaping is catch up, catching up very quickly, and it's about on par with marijuana use. And it's, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if it accelerates past that and, and, and catches up to, to alcohol use. With the, right, young, with, the with, the, with the younger kids in freshman year, more of them are vaping than using alcohol or marijuana. Is that correct? No, in the previous 30 days. In the, previous, in the last 30 days was one of the questions. The next question, we've got one from the floor. What are, if any, restrictions on sellers? Um, I think that means uh, ID age. It's 18. It's the same as, as tobacco. In some municipalities, it's 21. We're attempting to pass a law for tobacco 21, and vaping items would, be, uh, would fall under that as well. Yeah, and there's a lot of communities. Uh, last night, I spoke with uh, about 25 uh, teenagers that are part of a, a group in Glen Ellen called Reality, where they're going out and doing the, the 
what's it called the bottle uh, putting the putting the signs on bottle the tags, uh, yeah sticker shot uh -huh, the sticker shot campaign yeah. uh, the stickers, and they and they were really yeah. active and they actually got Glen Ellen to pass Tobacco 21 uh, I know in Naperville there it, it's the same thing or in, in motion so uh, it's I think it's at this point still going to be a grassroots operation but I th it's it's ironic to me that a lot of communities are moving toward tobacco being a 21 and older thing but at the same time we're struggling with this vaping issue really kind of emerging as well because I feel like we've made so much progress with cigarettes and tobacco in general that it's really kind of sad and it's a shame that we're having to deal with this in the past year or two at the same time. Another question is do all products need a battery? Does it wear out? Yes and yes and some of the products aren't made very well. We have had instances even locally where the batteries have blown up. The same as with the problems with some of the cell phones that Samsung had. Mm -hmm. It's the same type of battery. It's a nickel cadmium battery or a highly concentrated battery. Um, there was one instance also where someone inhaled one of the vaping pods into their lung. And they must have really been sucking on it. But mm -hmm. again, these are, many of them might not be made very well. And usually in the situations where it does call, and, and you've seen, it's probably seen stories about it, uh, lighting on, uh, on fire in a cargo, you know, the cargo compartment of an airplane. Usually it's situations where it's, it has a button and the button accidentally gets pressed in somebody's pocket or in luggage and, uh, and the, the heat, it just keeps heating up. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the devices now don't even have a button. They're activated by the act of inhaling, uh, in which case you're not going to see as much of that, but it's, it's just created this incredible ease of use that makes it so there's such a small barrier to, to kids trying these because it's so it's so easy to use them yeah there's a couple of questions about health education and consequences um, Scott I don't know if you want to say something about that here at the school you, you you're more familiar with that than I am either you or Chris oh, yeah. You know, one of the questions is, has the FDA targeted any vaping devices or companies? I mentioned Juul. They are looking very closely about whether or not it needs to be restrictions. But again, um, public pressure is what moves this. So contact your legislators, whoever is brought in after the election. Um, you know, contact your legislators, contact the government and pressure them to, to put more and more pressure on these companies. Um, what type of substances can be used in vaping? Uh, primarily, I've heard nicotine and marijuana, mm -hmm. um, but you can put anything into a vape pen. I've heard of, I've, I've, I've heard of uh, amphetamines, uh, meth being put in them. Um, there was one article I read a couple weeks ago um, about uh, e-juice in China that contained Viagra. So. Uh, I saw that. Um, yeah, so uh, um, you can put anything in there that you think might, might, might uh, have an effect on you. Mm -hmm. and, and not to scare people, but I think that's going to expand to many other drugs uh, in terms of that, that vape ability. Unfortunately, I think you're going to see that with other, in the next five or ten years, you're going to start to see that with other recreational drugs as well. Now, there's a question here about what's being done about the bathroom. So uh, I'll defer that to Scott as well. And Someone will walk in and we're able to find what we need to find and, and, uh, and then 
move along with the consequences? You know, oh, yes. list that we didn't re answer in the presentation. Most of them we covered, but there was one, how are kids getting these things so easily? And, and I think part of it is online. You mm -hmm. just answered that. But the Illinois Youth Survey says most of them get it at parties or from friends. They're, they're, that's, that's whether it's THC or vaping. Um, they, they, they get it from other kids. Other kids get it from older kids or people with IDs or people who have the access to get it online because nobody's at home other than the kids when, when UPS or FedEx might come. Uh, and I know kids do that just because my, both my parents worked when I was in high school and we always got the report card first. But uh, uh, so, so kids will do that. Yeah, and, and a lot of the kids that I've talked to that use these devices, they'll tell you, they say, we find if word spreads very quickly, whether it's here or, or neighboring suburbs, which which are the sh you know which are the shops that are are selling these to underage to underage minors uh, and then online it, it, in terms of buying buying these e juices and these products online uh, and I've done this it's really kind of alarming uh, if you go and you and you go to purchase it there is an age verification but do you know what it consists of are you 18? Yes, yes or no? Yes or no. So if you 18? think your 15-year-old's yeah. going to get to that question and they're like, ah, oh, my parents taught me well. Right. Even though no, I'm buying no, something it, illegal it, online. No, back to doing my paper. So that, but, that's, but then it goes right to the checkout for the most part. And so that's, when I say the Wild West, that's what I mean in terms of the, the accessibility or availability to get it. It's just, it's way too easy right now. And I think... The FDA really, uh, they're in a tough position, but they really need to, in my mind, step up to provide that regulation. If they, if they were to ask me, which I know they won't, but if they were to ask me, to me, fl the flavoring agents are the big problem because that's about 80% of kids that start them, they get into it initially because of the flavor. So to me, that would be the best first step that the FDA could do is to ban all the flavoring agents. You'll hear some outrage amongst adults that are actually trying to, but to me, where's the greater good? I'm sorry, adults that like the Cocoa Pebbles, I, sorry. But to me, to me, the greater good's gonna come out of teens not being drawn to, so that, I'll know the FDA is serious about this when you hear about banning flavoring agents and really rest, you know, restricting and monitoring online sales and continuing to do stings in brick and mortar shops. You know, they're in the information gathering still, and it's like, okay, how, how long are you gonna, nobody here works for the FDA, right, I hope. How, you do? Oh, how long, you know, how long does the information gathering go on? You know, that's, that's kind of what I come back to every time I read an article about this involving the FDA. So hopefully we'll see some, uh, some movement soon. One thing I wanna to touch on, and I'll get to your question right after that, is the school is not selling the vape items. This is a community problem. Right. The, the, it, it, kids aren't coming to school and that being the main place that they're getting. They're getting it from their friends, 
primarily outside of school or at parties or somewhere else. Yes, there is a problem in the school and a problem in the community and a problem in the home, and it's all of our problem. You know, that's why we sponsor the, drug, the Coalition for a Drug-Free Lyons Township. Uh, I'm head of the Lyons Township Mental Health Commission. Parents, parents are welcome, by the way. Yeah. And we, we, could, we could always use more parents in the Yes, in the parents group. are very welcome. There's flyers in with the materials about the coalition. Uh, we'd like to form a parent group. Um, that we have a youth task force. We're also looking for members for the youth task force. And uh, we have held these type of vaping presentations at a number of schools now. Four of the local middle schools two of the local high schools. We've got requests from three other schools after tonight. So we are really being active. We, we've done presentations at, at, at township buildings, at health fairs, at all sorts of things. Um, and if you have more ideas and more things of things we can do, we'd be happy to hear them. We had a question in the back. Couple, yes. couple questions. Okay. Can you touch on the 21-year-old age of buying? How would you um, will each town or city or municipality have to like vote on? Or will it be eventually statewide? There is a bill in state general assembly. Right. Um, big tobacco is what's behind this. It's n primarily nicotine. Also, big pot. There's a lot of money behind marijuana, so it's a tough sell to get it through the legislature. We need your help. I think until, I think there's going to be a tipping point, and we're not there yet, but I think there's going to be a tipping point where enough communities vote on this. And that's why I was really encouraged by some of these uh, towns that have voted on this and passed it, that I think it's going to start to get some momentum, but I think we're still a, a ways away from a tipping point where there is enough pressure on the state legislature to, to pass a statewide law. I still think it's going to be grassroots for a while. Yeah, and it really needs to be the law because... Uh I mean, how many of you wear seat belts now? Yeah. I wore seat belts in the 70s. That's because I worked in an emergency room and one of my jobs was picking glass out of people's faces. So it, it, it was real for me. But once it became the law, people abided by it. In the corner. For an LT student if they're found vaping, juuling, whether it's in a classroom, in a bathroom, in a locker room. What's, just for clarification, what's the consequence? It, depending on what they're vaping. If it's nicotine, it's treated as a cigarette offense. But what we've also added is with youth outreach services, and a couple of them are here tonight, um, we've uh, given them a, a requirement to work with them for two hours after school uh, to learn about what they're putting into their bodies. So it's not just a, a punishment. <laughs> they also get a ticket. They get a ticket just as if they've been smoking. If it was, if it's marijuana, that's a three-day suspension. Um, that also involves a ticket. Um, we've decriminalized marijuana in, in Illinois, but it's still illegal for an 18-year-old, 17, 16, 15, to smoke <laughs> marijuana. So uh, they do get the regular uh, consequences there too. Our goal in all of it, though, is to provide education along with the, the deterrent. Um, it's not just about suspending a kid and kicking him out of school so they can go home and vape and smoke some more. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, and and you, you send quite a few people, people, people to, to Rosemary's Rose for screening. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, Our number of referrals has gone up this year, partly due to a couple things we, we've changed. We've uh, given our student support teams who meet um, weekly about kids who are at risk and who are, who are struggling, the power to recommend kids for referrals. And so um, Matt's gotten quite a few more this year, some of the other places as well, um, because we're, we're recognizing things earlier and we want to get kids help. So our goal is really to, to have some early intervention and let kids know that we take this stuff seriously and that we want to get them help. It's, um, we see this as a problem, a physical health problem. It's not just a cool, trendy thing to do. Um, so that's happening more and more. You might yeah, yeah, I'll say, say that to LT's, LT's credit, because I work with probably about 30 high schools in the western suburbs, that I, I would put LT in the top five in terms of ide identifying and getting kids referred for assessments, referred for treatment. And it's not because it's more of a problem here. That's... There, there's kids in every school that are drinking, that are vaping, that are using drugs. To me, it's, is the school doing a good job of identifying 
and getting those kids assessed for, uh, uh, referred for assessment, referred for treatment. And I truly, truly would believe that LTs in, in the top 10% of schools I work with in terms of really being diligent uh, about getting those kids identified and referred for services. So, so kudos to the staff here. We've got someone in the back. We have an elementary and park next year, potentially LT. And I just, you know, I'm a kid of the 70s, 80s. This is your brain on drugs, frying in a pan. Where is the visuals for these kids? You talked about the cigarette pack or whatever. But what are we doing in the elementary or junior high level? And when you say you've been doing presentations, are you doing them to the kids at those in the schools? Or are you doing them to parents at those schools? Well, I'm doing them to the parents as an outside. Like we are doing here, and we're bringing the bedroom there for the parents. A lot of that really starts in the home. And I want to congratulate all of you parents for coming here tonight. Uh, you really deserve a round of applause. I mean, a lot of the parents who I wish would be here aren't, but, 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 but the, the, they also have that in their, in their classroom, in their, in their health classes. They are covering that. You know, do they do seminars? Like, do you do, you know, a, assembly kind of thing okay. at the junior highs? I, I have not been part of it at the middle school, but we just started meeting with the middle school principals this fall, and we came in this last month during Red Ribbon Week into the middle schools in the area. And Park hasn't been scheduled yet, but they do want our presentation. They do want our bedroom. Um, we've been to McClure. We've been to Gurry. We've been to Pleasantdale. St. Francis has also asked for, uh, for us to come in. So, so we are going school after school. We've talked with Highlands, and they want us to come in. So, so, so we're moving, and we've been in Argo High School, and they're starting to work with their middle schools as well. We've also shared our data uh, because when we interviewed our ninth graders when they took the surveys, one of the questions was, in the last year, have you used anything? Well, that included eighth grade. Right, right. And so we've shared that information with those schools as well. Uh, one of the things you could do is certainly encourage your uh, middle schools to give the survey. They give it to eighth graders as well. So. If in the next year, next two years, we do uh, the youth survey again, we will certainly. We would love to get the other schools to do it. Um, again, just to give that information. I think what we're finding too is they're just the, they're just realizing it's an issue themselves, and so um, the middle schools are finding it more often uh, than they had previously. Maybe because they're looking for it. I don't know, but it, it, it's a challenge. I think you know more than anything, it has become really trendy. And so we just have to make sure that everyone, all the adults are aware of it as well. So it's not just. And youth outreach services is actually, we're in the schools. Um, we go where we're welcome. Um, just to piggyback off what he said, um, if the school doesn't find it to be a problem, they may say, no, we don't need your services there. But um, my point but is educating the kids before it becomes a problem, like fifth and right. sixth grade and an elementary Absolutely. School. So we do prevention work okay. um, in Chicago and, um, for example, I'm at Gary now. Okay. Um, and we're, we're they have a great dare program. Very, yes. I think I've so heard we it's are seeing we can see as young as sixth sixth grade yeah. on up. So I'm working with the seventh and eighth graders, and um, it's awesome. So yeah. we're definitely bring it over to the other elementary schools. I would love to totally be there. support you. Thank you. And you are at some of the schools, schools locally. Like Ron was said, in terms of seeing this as a community, and we all play a role in this. You know, advocate if you have kids that are in middle school or elementary school, talk to the administrators, communicate, con communicate that you want, you want to see this, pr you know, present that to, to get it on their radar, to get the ball, ball rolling as well. And, and your other groups too. Have it in the youth groups, have it in the churches. There's, there's, there's a patch for Red Ribbon Week for Boy Scouts. You know, there, there, there's, there's other things. Get the information out wherever there are kids, at the YMCA, whatever. Someone in the back over there. I have a question about, um, you know, nicotine is addictive, obviously. How much usage causes addiction? Like, how many? <laughs> Yes. It really, uh, definitely, and this is, a, I know, a not, not a satisfying answer, but it depends really on the, the risk factors that are involved with each individual um, in terms of is there a family history of alcoholism or addiction? That tends to be the number one risk factor. Are there other co-occurring mental health issues? Is there any history of trauma or abuse? Any, of the, any or all of those 
uh, in terms of those, you know, those types of risk factors are going to make someone get hooked faster than if someone that doesn't have those risk factors. I know that's not a very detailed answer, but that really is what it boils down to. Right. I mean, for, for an example, I'm, I have a... They get, like, people who try to stop smoking have, they get irritable, they're kind of... Yeah, yeah, the term, You'll hear kids now turn, hear, use the I just found this out a few months ago, Nixic. In other words, kids that use it a lot, one of these devices a lot, and they stop, they get like a withdrawal, and nicotine sickness, nicotine withdrawal, irritability, you know. Um, so, so that's how popular these have become, that term Nixic has become a common part of kids' vocabulary. Right. Nicotine is a stimulant. I mean, I... You know, I tried, I tried cigarettes in late high school and college off and on, and I, it was very easy for me to quit. My twin, twin brother could not. He is still smoking today after a quadruple bypass and three heart attacks. And that's, that's where nicotine affects you, not just the smoking in the lungs and the carcinogens, but it hits your cardiovascular system. It causes, eventually, it causes heart disease. We noticed that as far as drinking and some other drug usage, it's not as frequent, but vaping is very frequent. So for our seniors, 30% of the students who vape had vaped more than 20 times in the previous year. Um, and that's not the case of many other drugs um, and other things that students are doing. They tend to do it and do it frequently. Um, it's, it's like you either try it and hate it, or you try it and become addicted. It's, there's almost no sort of in-between. It's like 8, 9, 10% have tried it a couple of times. It's sort of all or nothing, and that's, uh, you don't see that as much with any other drug, and not even alcohol that frequently. Can you tell me how many, the number of students that got caught vaping this year at LC? Kevin, you want to take a stab at that? Uh, dozens. We're, we're probably between uh, 50 and 100. I can get you, if you want to send an email, uh, I can a number. I don't know. Okay. 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 information that's out there. Stop at our bedroom if you haven't. But pick up, pick up that and pick up information on our coalition. It, it was 54 at the end of quarter one. Um, so that was a few weeks ago. Um, that was a significant increase from last year, um, which was probably 19 at the end of quarter one last year. We saw this two years ago um, in terms of vaping just showing up on the radar. It exploded last year with the incidence of vaping. This year it's exploded with the use of THD. Um, in my conversations with um, my colleagues from around the suburban area, other Chicago High School principals, we're actually hosting a workshop on Thursday night for other school leaders and one of the sessions is vaping. So we're going to get a chance to share what we do and hear what other schools are doing as well. But absolutely, two years ago we started seeing it exploded last year with just vaping and this year with, with that THD. And when we ask the kids, what's yeah. their number one way that's, of... That's combined. That's combined. North and South. Yeah, when we ask the kids, what's the number one way that you get marijuana, 74% said they vaped it at LT. So of those who use marijuana, three quarters of them vape it, 77% smoke it. So it's right in there. It's sort of interchangeable. That's the way they're, they're getting the delivery. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Students from LT who smoke they vape marijuana. LT. <laughs> uh, students who use marijuana at LT, 75% of them get it through patients. Oh, is that uh, sure. that, that's a good point because the other thing our assistant principals would say is that we're seeing a decrease in the amount of mar actual marijuana that we're seeing because it's more readily available. We just don't see it. We, see it. it. we don't see joints. How was that survey conducted on something that you're asking students that's illegal? Correct. Uh, the, this is a very highly protocol uh, survey, and it is done throughout the entire state for those who choose to give it. Um, it is uh, a number of questions, I would say over 300 questions. Um, what they do is they ask questions a, a number of different ways, and also ask them if they're being honest. Um, they ask about their own perceptions, about their own use, about their friends' use, about what they think their parents think about it, about what they think uh, the community thinks about it. They ask about their um, social emotional health, about their mental health. They ask about their weight and exercise. And so it's, it's sort of a holistic youth survey. It's not a drug survey, um, but it asks a lot of questions about drugs. It goes all the way down to meth and heroin and oxycodone and all that. So we, they've told us that all those hard drugs that you hear about in the news, 
That's, we're not seeing that here. But when you interview the people who, when they're 22 or 23, show up at Matt's facility, they started with just plain old drinking, <coughs> plain old smoking, plain old vaping, and it's that addictive personality component it then builds. So they may not be doing that stuff as a freshman, sophomore, junior, but when they're 19, when they're 20, when they're 22, that's when you they're looking for the next thing. No one wakes up and says, I'm gonna start heroin, but anybody can hand you a vape pen and it's nicotine and they're similar drugs. So it's a, it's a challenge. It, 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 is an, it, it is an anonymous survey, which, it, which helps. It's a voluntary survey and people were able to opt out. But, but it was, was given to the entire student body. 3,800 kids in a day. How many participate? 3,800. Wow. And, and this, this is a, a survey, survey that, or a type of survey. They change it a little bit every year or two, but it's, it's a survey with a long history of over 20 years of being given, and it matches other state surveys. So the federal government at, at, at SAMHSA, um, uh, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, um, uses the combined data from all the states for federal funding, federal programs, CDC, FDA, other types of reports. So it's a very important and very structured survey, and they test it for uh, falsehoods. They, they, they have a range of people who lie on them and they, 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 they know how to screen out or, or just throw out a certain percentage because the, that's typical when they've gone and tested it. Uh, and, and it's a very good survey. I want to commend LT for conducting that survey and for giving it to all of their students and for their cooperation on the coalition. They've been very supportive and sending staff and, and Scott's worked with us quite a bit. So has Chris Kostopoulos, so did Gene Whiting. Um, we've worked with a lot of uh, LT staff with, uh, with our coalition and, and had a number of youth from LT on our youth task force. Okay. 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 Wrap it up. This is the last question. I don't want to ignore the student here. I've got a question from a. Student. And then we'll wrap up. We want to be respectful of people's time because we're coming up at eight thirty. So last one. Uh, so I have a question about how to like turn kids into vaping. Because if you see them like go into a bathroom stall together and you know they're raping, by the time you find a security guard, they're usually gone. Right. See if, if I, I, I'm not gonna make a big, a big campaign to turn our friends in. That's not our number one strategy. But <laughs> the, speak, they are. The, the speak up line is always available. It's, it's available online to the phone. Use the online portal through the website. Are you an LT student? Yeah. Yeah, just run on the LTHS website. You can also just describe they're wearing a black Hawks hoodie and they know the name. <laughs> Somebody will know. So that does speak to the, the difficulty, right? The, the reality of it. And we, we have a rotation set up among staff and our student assistants and um, doing what we can right. to try to limit that. But that does speak to the difficulty. We'll be glad to stay. We're not going to run out, but I know that we, we said 8.30, so uh, thank you, everyone, for your time, for coming tonight. We'll stick around if you'd like to talk to us individually. We'll be glad to answer questions.